Hello, beautiful family. Happy New Year's Eve. It's just another pagan holiday. You know, it's just another day. Do you really think that God sits there on, on his glorious throne thinking, hey, Happy New Year's Eve, and we're doing fireworks up there in heaven, you know, or actually looking at the fireworks displayed down here on earth? Uh, I don't think so. It's just another day. But we've been indoctrinated since we were little kids. Oh, it's New Year's Day. It's a brand new year. If if it didn't happen this year, then it has to happen that year. Or if it did, if it didn't happen, if if it didn't happen last year, then it has to happen next year. But what if it doesn't happen next year? Then it may not happen until 2024. And we just start thinking such ridiculous thoughts, man. And that's spiritual warfare, plain and simple. God does not go by a Gregorian calendar. He goes by his appointed days, his appointed feast days. He really has an appointed time. So please, don't get caught up into these celebrations, these man-made celebrations. There's nothing, there's no... It's, it's a it's a Gregorian calendar. It's not even a Hebrew calendar. It's not. I mean, it has nothing to do with. You know, oh, the rapture didn't happen this year. No, it's, it's it could happen tonight. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen next week. It's eminent. It's the eminency of the rapture, or the bride of Christ, and it will happen, according to Bible prophecy. And Bible prophecy has always been true always that's why it's the number one selling book in the world the scriptures are the number one selling book in the world because what is it more than one third of it is prophecy and all the prophecies in the past before israel became a nation in 1948 all those prophecies were fulfilled four thousand years ago And then all the prophecies, I mean, Bible prophecy is just leaping out of the pages right now, and it's currently being fulfilled, and we just have a little bit left, guys. The brevity of the situation is, is mind-boggling. It really is, if you really think about it. And most people have no idea, no clue. They're still spiritually asleep. But... The Bible told us that would be, you know, the scriptures told us that this would happen. And this is a plea to all born-again Christians out there. Please continue to spread the, God, the good news, the message of salvation, the gospel message. Give me your testimony if you can. If you can't do that, a gospel tract, whatever you can do. If you can't do that, just be a good role model. Just act like a good Christian, you know? With the, with the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. The love, the joy, the peace, the kindness, the gentleness, the faithfulness, the long-suffering. It's so important. Because a lot of people that are I mean, suicide is up like crazy. And, of course, they're not going to report about it. They have more important things to report about on mainstream media news. If they do report about it, it's like a 30-second uh, section, you know? Like a 5.30 in the morning or something. <laughs> Anyways, I have a beautiful, beautiful, special devotional today and it's made for such a time as this so enjoy it I know you will be blessed by it tremendously it's entitled all things made new and this is from Revelation 21 3 to 4 God himself will be with them as their God he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more Neither shall be neither shall there be mourning nor crying 
nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Hallelujah. The whole idea of a new heaven and a new earth is very hard to comprehend. But we can stay with we but we can say with absolute certainty that God is going to take what is present and transform it. And he's determined that no one and nothing will be will be capable of, of destroying his perfected kingdom. We can say this with such certainty because he is the God who is so powerful to keep his promises, seen most gloriously of all at a wooden cross and an empty tomb. Right now, behind the scenes of what we call history, God is preparing to bring his kingdom in all its fullness. And it is, in fact, something he has, been, he has been, been preparing from all of eternity. When Christ returns, he will usher in this new kingdom, a new heaven and earth in which righteousness dwells. Now, they're talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ, okay? When God's perfected kingdom is finally established, sin will have been punished, justice will have been satisfied, and evil will have been destroyed. Gee, I wonder how that could happen. Hmm. There will be no more death, mourning, crying, or pain. Those will all be merely the former things that will have passed away. When God brings his kingdom to fruition, when his perfect plan unfolds, no one and nothing will be able to spoil it. The word new, as it is used to describe the new heaven and the new earth in Revelation, is not describing time or origin, it's describing kind and quality. In other words, God is going to transform creation so that it reflects all the glory and magnificence that he originally intended for it. Satan will not get the satisfaction of watching God destroy his creation. Nope, because he'll be locked away for a thousand years. Rather, God is going to use fire to purify it, just as he once used water in the days of Noah. Now we're talking a little bit more about the rapture. So the new earth will still be earth. It will be a physical place inhabited by physical people, but now it shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. No wonder then that the whole of creation stands on tiptoe, longing to be liberated from its bondage to sin and decay. This new creation is worth waiting for. It is worth living for and even dying for. God is going to renew all things, our souls, our minds, our bodies, and even the environment in which we live in. None of the things which currently spoil life on earth will be present. Nothing. And all that is hoped for, all that is anticipated, will find its fulfillment once and for all. So, as Romans 8.23 says, we wait eagerly. There is never a need to despair, no matter how dark life may become. For the day God wipes away your tears lies ahead. And we wait for it with patience. There is never a need to seek to seize all you think you need now, no matter how tempting that may be. For the day when God brings all the joy and satisfaction you could imagine lies ahead. In very close proximity. Let eagerness and patience be your watchwords for today. So, what I just told you about, that's about the new heavens and the new earth. That's about... First, the 1,000 year millennial reign, which is going to be right here on planet Earth, where the new Jerusalem actually comes down from the heavens and is going to be situated on the Mount of Olives. 
you need to read the book of Revelation. Do you know why you need to read it? Do you know why you need to read the book of Revelation? I'll tell you why. Well, the book of Revelation, you know, a lot of people can get confused with it. A lot of times people get scared with it. There's sometimes people say there's a lot, way too much um, symbology, way, way, way too much symbolism. The, but, but the truth of the matter is there's not that much symbolism. Really, there really isn't. And if you you need to read the, you have to really need to read the Old Testament, not the Old Testament. I'm sorry, the original covenant, in order to understand the Book of Revelation. And it's Revelation, not Revelations. Who wrote it? The Apostle John. All the other apostles were, they died very violent deaths. They were martyred. For the faith but John was the only one that was exiled onto the island of Patmos because um, they tried to kill him they put him in a pot of boiling oil and uh, he just miraculously survived and uh, so when that happens back then people think oh that's you know that's like a, a prophet or an omen or a superstition you know we shouldn't mess with him you know so they just stuck him on an island, you know what I mean? <laughs> out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. <sighs> Revelation is all about an amazing and colorful picture of Jesus Christ's triumph over every power of the devil. Remember, the, the battle's already been won. The foe has been defeated. Evil... Good has destroyed evil. And because, because the devil knows scriptures better than I, you and I, better than any other pastor out there, he knows scripture so well. He knows that his days are numbered. He knows that with everything happening around the world, that we're about to enter Daniel's 70th week prophecy. And when that seven year tribulation kicks off, First, the rapture happens, and Jesus Christ comes for his own and takes us up into his glorious kingdom of the Shamaim, the kingdom of heaven. The seven year tribulation will commence down here on earth. It'll be seven years of pure hell. Billions of people will literally die. There will be the seal judgments there'll be the trumpet judgments there'll be the bold judgments and they just get worse progressive, progressively worse and worse and worse and worse kind of like how we're leading up to the seven year tribulation and the, the rapture it's the same thing with the um, with the uh, with the judgments that come upon the entire unrepenting and unbelieving world. But, again, I just read to you, God is going to establish its righteous kingdom. Okay? I mean, some people will survive the seven-year tribulation. Okay? There's definitely going to be a Jewish remnant that's going to survive. Okay? There's going to be other people that are going to survive too. And during that 1,000 years, the world will repopulate itself big time. You know? But there's going to be two different kinds of people. There's going to be people with glorified bodies that are going to live forever for eternity. And there's going to be earth dwellers. People that lived on earth and they they never died so regardless of whether they believe in in the transform transforming power of the blood of Jesus Christ or if they did not believe in it it doesn't matter because they're alive you understand what I'm saying so they're just gonna repopulate and um, but again there's not gonna be any temptation 
And let me tell you, if there is, well, first of all, there's not, because Satan's going to be bound away for a thousand years, okay? that's If you read the book of Revelation, you'll understand that. Um, and the reason, there's, a, there's a, an important reason why. And the reason why is because after that 1,000 years, he has to let Satan um, be set free. And the reason why is so that way he can, uh, that way he can say, you know, well, it wasn't me, you know. <laughs> I mean, I let Satan free and you guys went towards him. So obviously it's, it's there's a problem with mankind. It's, it has nothing to do with me. Something like that. Something to that effect. I can go into more detail about that, but I don't want to throw a plethora of a throw of, of information on you right now but you can read it yourself in the book of revelation it's the only book that promises a blessing the only out of the 60 books 66 books in the bible is the only book that promises a blessing in the first very short paragraph it says this is a revelation from jesus christ which god gave him to show his servants the events that must soon take place. He sent an angel to present this revelation to his servant John, who faithfully reported everything he saw. This is his, this is his report of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. God blesses the one who reads the words of this prophecy to the church. And he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says, for the time is near. Again, this was written around 80, 95, 95 years after Jesus Christ was crucified. While John was exiled to the very lonely, lonely, lonely island of Patmos because of his faith. So he died of a natural death. So if you're a born again believer, that's another person you're gonna to get to see, especially at the at the uh, the wedding feast of the Lamb, which are all which we are all very much looking forward to. So you see, some people don't like to talk about Bible prophecy because they're unsure of it. They don't want to scare people because a lot of pastors are just having trouble trying to get people to believe that that there is that there, that there truly is a God and that if you truly believe in the gospel message and you actually dive into his word and you pray then you'll be justified and then you'll receive his Holy Spirit and you'll be, and you'll be sanctified and then the, that sanctification process is not fun it can be painful but <laughs> you, eternal life or heaven you know, I mean, I'm sorry hell or eternal life come on you know the, the scriptures clearly tell us if we are to partake in the glory of Jesus Christ we're also to we're also gonna have to partake in the sufferings and a lot of us are doing that right now you know but this is the generation this is the generation the Jewish people are waiting for their Messiah to come and we all know that that's not the Messiah it's the false Messiah it's the son of perdition the Antichrist who's going to come with signs and wonders and the false prophet and the whole beast system it's just pure pure evil and since God is a jealous God meaning that he's jealous of us because he sent his only begotten son here on earth 2000 years ago to preach the repentance of sins and because of that he was 
he suffered he was he was tortured he was crucified and he was put in a tomb but on the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures he ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the father and he will come again in his glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have absolutely no end but everything that I told you about about his kingdom that's going to be perfect how is it going to, how, how is he going to get to that point Whenever you see a rainbow up in the sky, I'm sure you guys know that what that rainbow means, right? In the Bible it says, I believe it's in yeah, it's in Genesis, towards the end of Genesis, Genesis 50, I believe. God put a rainbow in the sky as a covenant, okay? To remind his people and to remind himself that Never again will he destroy the world with a deluge of water, as he did in Noah's flood. But, he is going to destroy this world with fire and brimstone. I encourage you, if you really want to know, if you don't believe now is the time for salvation because time is truly running out it's running out quick the rapture is imminent it could happen at any time and we watchmen who study bible prophecy and look at the things that are happening around us we have the indwelling christ the the ruach hakodesh the, we have the spirit of the lord inside of us he guides us into all truth and the things that are yet to come. And we're all on the same page. In order for the Antichrist to be revealed, we have to be out of here. And you can be part of that group too. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, First, you have to admit that you're a sinner. Just look it up on Google, the ABCs of salvation. Admit that you're a sinner, because we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Pride is the number one thing that gets in the way of everything. It's the gateway to all other sins, in my opinion. Get rid of that pride. Admit that you're a sinner. Admit that because you're a sinner, you're in need of a savior. And that God's redemptive plan for humanity, for his own creation, was to send his only begotten son, Yahushua HaMashiach. He entered this world, born of the Virgin Mary. He started his earthly ministry around, I don't know what, age 30, 31 years old. Imagine how rough it must have been for him to grow up with people mocking him and teasing him because he was so perfect that he never sinned once, you know, while everyone else was just, you know, not born again. Remember, when we're born into this world, our natural default is to be born into this world to do what the matrix tells us to do which is to go to a good good school get a high paying job make a lot of money have a lot of kids have grandkids da, 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 and you die folks that's just a blip on the radar screen life here on earth is just a blip on the radar screen when you die that's when real life starts and you have eternity, eternity, that's forever, to live in either one or two places, either the kingdom of heaven or hell, which God himself created for Lucifer 
and all his demons and one third of the angels that he cast out of the sky because they tried to overthrow his throne so I just read to you about God's kingdom that he's going to set here set up here on earth okay and during that 1,000 year millennial reign because the world will, will repopulate Jerusalem is going to be like the main seat of the government okay and all the nations of the country I don't know how many nations are going to be left but the Bible doesn't really tell us that but everyone has is going to have to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem three times a year for three important feasts and if they don't do it that's why it says Jesus Christ is going to rule with a rod of iron you know what I'm saying he's not going to tolerate any any BS he's not just like in the Old Testament days, you did something wrong, you were stoned to death. You know? The rapture is real. It is going to happen soon. Whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. Don't be left behind. Because, first of all, the, chance of you, the chances of you surviving the seven year tribulation are not that good but if you survive it but but if you die okay by by one of the 300 pound hailstones that fall are falling down on the earth it's, it's part of one, one of the one of the um, one of the judgments if you have your faith in Jesus Christ and You've been hearing all these crazy people talking to you for the last year and a half, two years, that the rapture is going to happen, Jesus Christ is coming, get ready. Finally, it's going to click, and you're going to believe. You're going to believe. Unless you get swept away with that whole alien deception thing. So, But that's another topic for another day. The scriptures say there's going to be a massive revival after the rapture. Many people are going to come to faith in Jesus Christ right after the rapture. The thing is, is that now you're going to have to be tested. You're going to have to be tested like gold is being tested in fire to be refined for all the impurities to fall out. so it can be real pure gold so please today is the day of salvation you have to read the scriptures you have to read this book this book is the instruction manual to life this book this has been preserved for over 4,000 years well at least the original covenant has and then the renewed covenant was written AD after of course but this goes from 4,000 years ago from the first five books of Moses Genesis Numbers Deuteronomy Leviticus and I'm forgetting one Genesis, Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and I got a cheat here. Genesis, Exodus. Yeah, I'm sorry, Exodus. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deut Deut Deuteronomy. Those were the first five books that Moses wrote. Please read the entire scriptures. Time is running out. I'm not being sensationalist at all. I'm just letting you know what I and millions of other born-again Christians know. 
and we don't want to see anyone suffer and go through seven years of supernatural, little supernatural torture on earth or you're going to see things that you've only seen in movies. And the whole system, the B system, which is, well, I can't talk about it too much here on YouTube, but it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty. So please, 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 please pray. Ask God to reveal to you. Ask God to have Jesus Christ come into your heart and to renew your heart and to renew your mind and to reveal to you the things that are going to come and ask for him to have the Holy Spirit come into you. You have to have a fear of the Lord because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom is, is the beginning of all wisdom and understanding. The problem is many people many people don't fear him anymore. You know? They don't depend on him because they depend on their money instead, they depend on their job, they depend on their cars, they depend on their relationships. Everything's fine. Until everything's taken away from you. And then you depend on God. God loves you so much. He says it in the scriptures that he wishes that no man, by, by the way, when I say man, I mean mankind. It's man and woman. He wishes that no man should perish, but that all should come to him with a repentant heart. Repent, repentant means metanoia in Greek, right? That means to turn away from your sin. And it's a process. It's it's a painful process. It's sanctification. So first you're justified by hearing the gospel message. And you start reading the Bible. Now you're sanctified because you received His Holy Spirit, which is a supernatural gift, the best gift in the world. And then, eventually... It's justification, sanctification, and then glorification. You get your glorified bodies, which I spoke about in one of my videos. I think the title had glorification in it. So it's a beautiful thing that's going to happen, and it's going to happen, guys. I know it sounds like a movie, like a, like a fantasy movie, you know? This is not a religion. People always ask me, what, de what denomination do you belong to, you know? None. I'm just a Bible-believing Christian, you know? I call myself a Christian because I follow Christ. Yahushua HaMashiach. Jesus the Christ. Jesus stands for salvation. Christ stands for the Anointed One, the Messiah. That's all. So, if you believe in New Year's re resolutions... Make it your your new your New Year's resolution to uh, to actually spend 15 minutes a day, just 15 minutes a day, to read the Bible. But you can't be distracted. You got to go into a quiet place and just read 15 minutes a day. The Old Testament. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a little bit grueling, but it flows perfectly into the New Testament or the renewed covenant. And then your eyes will be open and and then you'll just have this hunger, this this extreme hunger for the Word of God. And you'll want to naturally do things that are kind and I don't know, it just it just totally renews your heart and your mind supernaturally through his Holy Spirit that he puts inside of you. The same Holy Spirit that's going to give you that glorified body. Unfortunately, the scriptures also say that narrow, narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to eternal life. 
and few find it. But broad is the way and wide is the path and easy is the way that leads to eternal damnation and hell and many are on that road. So it's already prophesying that a lot of people are not going to make it to heaven. And that makes me sad. That makes me very sad. But all I can do is plant those seeds. All, all, all of us that are trying to, to, we have to realize that we can't drill into your head. Only God can call you, call you to Himself. But we can plant those seeds, and pray that God will water those seeds, nourish those seeds, and make them into a beautiful fruit-bearing tree, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love you all. Please read your Bibles. Stay in the faith. If you're a born-again believer, spiritual warfare is off the charts. You have to feed your faith daily. You have to. Otherwise, the enemy it comes in like a like a prowling rock, like a like a like a roaring lion, looking looking to see who 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 you can devour next. He's the father of all lies. A lot of people don't believe in hell. They don't believe in Satan. They just want to believe about, about the good stuff. But that's not true. That's not true. Anyways. Be safe out there tonight. Um... And if you are not serious about all of this stuff, I'm telling you, time is very, very, very short. Please, please pray. Start reading the scriptures. If you're going to a Catholic church, don't go to a Catholic church anymore. They're misleading you. They're misguiding you. I know because I went to a Catholic elementary school and a Catholic high school. And it wasn't until I was 40, 44 years of age that I was born again. I've been born again for five years. And since day number one, my hunger to learn and, and, and go deeper into the, into the entire Holy Writ of the Bible, it's just been unquenchable. I just want to more, learn more, 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 more. It's amazing how it consumes you. That's because you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Yeah, it sounds kind of it sounds kind of crazy and off the wall and charts, but it's the truth. There's a spiritual realm out there, <laughs> and there's a battle right now raging for your mind between the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of the Almighty, the Most High, the God of Israel. So, you can't sit at the same table where Satan sits and God sits. You know, you can't sit at the same table. You gotta, you gotta choose today whom you're gonna serve. So please, choose wisely. Choose life, eternal life. Because hell is a place of eternal torment place of darkness where you're eternally separated from God demons are going to be scratching down trying to claw you down deeper into the pit of hell there's a lake of fire down there it's darkness but you can feel the heat and you're going to be given this body because everybody that dies is going to be given a resurrected body one that's either fit for heaven or one that's fit for hell and if you're, if you're unfortunately sent to hell, it's for eternity, guys. And you're going to be tormented daily for eternity. God is going to, going to, he's going to open up your eyes. He's going to, he's going to make you have this conscience again. And he's going to make you think of all the bad things you did on earth and that 
you're really, really sorry now for, but it's, now it's too late. God is a God of love, but he's a God of wrath too. And his cup of mercy is about to run out and his cup of wrath is about to overflow. And God's cup of wrath is about to be, his, God's cup of wrath is about to be poured onto this unrepenting and unbelieving world. So please, please, Put your faith in Jesus Christ, trust in him, learn about him, read him. He's real, he's the risen king. He's gonna come and rule and reign the entire world. His seat of government is gonna be in Jerusalem. Everyone has to, has, has, has to come and respond to him. There's not gonna be any more fighting, no more war. No more sin, no more dying, no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow, nothing of that. Nothing. Because Lucifer is going to be locked away for a thousand years. Anyways, love you guys, okay? Have a good night. Ciao.